Now I have to ask because I, I do a lot of research on uh, neurodegenerative disease and something that always comes up in, in my line of research is this APOE4 uh, allele that presents people at a higher genetic risk, although you know this gene is not destiny that you're going to go on to develop Alzheimer's disease, it's the sort of risk gene associated very closely with Alzheimer's disease and it's a, it's a lipoprotein, APOE, uh, which means that it has implications on lipid profile cardiovascular health and many people in the APOE uh, community, those with the APOE4 allele, which make up 20 to 25 percent of the of the U.S. population, are told that perhaps the low carb, high fat diet is not the best for them. They're told to maybe limit their fat intake and stuff like that. What are your What are your thoughts on that? Well, I can tell you, having seen this play out over a number of years, it, the conventional answer to APOE4 people, these people who hyperabsorb dietary fats and cholesterol, and thereby have high total cholesterol and high LDL cholesterol. The conventional answer is cut your fat, cut your saturated fat, eat more healthy whole grains, right? What, what that conventional answer does is it makes ApoE4 patterns much worse. Hmm. It may look better a little bit on a conventional cholesterol pattern, but if you did the advanced lipoprotein analysis and some other testing, you'll see that an ApoE4 person who goes on a low-fat diet, thereby a higher carbohydrate, higher grain diet, can be just as diabetic as anybody else will overexpress small LDL. They actually get worse when you cut total fat and saturated fat. So the wrong answer for ApoE4 is cut your fat, eat more healthy whole grains. What I've done, and I won't pretend to have all the answers, a lot of the wisdom in ApoE4 is still evolving. What I did with my several hundred patients with ApoE4 was do the very same thing I do with everybody else. No grains, no sugars. To, to reduce the expression of small LDL, watch HDL go up, watch triglycerides come down, watch blood sugar and hemoglobin A1C, the long-term measure of blood sugar, come down. Then you'll be left with some measure of higher LDL, measured, truly measured LDL, cholesterol, LDL, better LDL particle numbers, a real measure of LDL particles. Next step, cultivate bowel food. Bowel flora. Yeah. Okay. That, that's why we're, why we're here to talk about these of kinds of things. This issue hasn't been raised yet in this conference, but there is a very vigorous science that shows us that if you cultivate certain species of bowel flora, that you actually reduce LDL and total cholesterol, and can be as by as much as thirty percent. That's a complex mechanism, but it's, it's quite well sorted out. Well, so for APOE four carriers, gut health might be even. I mean, it's very important for everybody. It's an it's an underappreciated. Um, part of our, you know, of our health, but for ApoE4, as you're saying, it's even more important, maintaining a, a diverse... It's critical. Wow. And there's another marker called uh, cetosterol. Cetosterol is kind of like plant cholesterol. Okay. And ApoE4, this, this is not what they talked about. People with ApoE4 are also hyperabsorbers, not just of cholesterol, but of cetosterol. Okay. And so if you measure cetosterol levels in people with ApoE4, you'll see higher levels. Cetosterol. I'm going to be going on a nerd safari later on tonight on PubMed. <laughs> this is news to me. And cetosterol, the data is looking like people who have higher levels of cetosterol, certainly high, much higher levels, mm -hmm. can get very aggressive heart disease. So cultivating bowel flora by all the ways that we all talk about, right? Yeah, Removing time. toxins like grains and sugars. Cutting out the sugar, you know, Probiotics, consuming fermented foods. Fermented foods, prebiotic soluble fiber, fibers. Yeah. yeah, avoidance of antibiotics if possible, right? Trying to avoid chlorinated water, all that kind of stuff. You cultivate the species that reduce reabsorption, intestinal cholesterol, and cetosterol. So you get this wonderful double benefit when you cultivate bowel flora properly. You reduce total cholesterol, LDL values, and cetosterol. Now, after you do all that, ApoE4 people, some ApoE4 people can still be left with higher values. What nobody knows is after you've done all that, is that mostly large LDL particles? Does that really still pose any risk? Nobody knows. No one's got no. that answer yet. I suspect not, because I don't believe that there's a widespread statin deficiency in people <laughs> right. with ApoE4. So I, I, I'm skeptical that's true. And as you know, dietary uh, uh, higher levels of cholesterol in ApoE4 for prevention of dementia and Alzheimer's may actually be a good thing. Right. So I'm skeptical that that represents that situation after you've corrected all the things around ApoE4, ApoE4. I'm skeptical that that's a mandate for a statin drug. Well, Dr. Davis, thank you so much for your time. Sure thing, Max. How can viewers uh, learn more about your work? Easiest way to start is the Wheat Belly blog okay. or the Wheat Belly Facebook page. Cool.
Thank you so much. Thank you, Max. Appreciate it.